Hello, I am Arion. This is Book Zealots. This is my second part to the book haul. This will be the end. I think I can do it. The Crimean War, the causes and consequences of a medieval conflict fought in a modern age by Alexis Trubetskoy. <laughs> I don't know if that's right. I don't know much about the Crimean War. Don't tell Prometheus. Don't tell Prometheus. I, I will get... I will get the history. I will learn. And then he'll talk to me about something and I'll say, oh, I know about that. And then I'll add something and then he'll be so pleased. Black Arts by Jim Frederick. This is One Platoon's Descent into Madness in Iraq's Triangle of Death. Yikes. Sounds very depressing. Why did I buy this? History. Members of one Blackheart platoon, 1st platoon, Bravo Company, 1st battalion, descended over their year-long tour of duty into a tailspin of poor discipline, substance abuse, and brutality. Uh-oh. That's not good. A Century Turns, New Hopes, New Fears by William J. Bennett. I had to get this. I was going to pass it up, and then I realized, wait a minute, William J. Bennett, I know that name. I'm going to buy it. So so I did. It was an author buy. House of Abraham, Lincoln and the Todd's Family Divided by War by Stephen or Stephen Barry. Everybody says it different, right? It's spelled Stephen, but not every Stephen pronounces it Stephen. Some Stephens pronounce it Stephen, right? Let me know down below. And of course there are pictures. I often wonder what would have happened if Abraham Lincoln had married his his first love. Um, I don't remember her name, but she they were going to get married. They waited because she was going to school. I don't remember what he was doing, and she ended up getting sick and dying. And I often wonder what would have happened. As you were to war and back with the Black Hawk Battalion of the Virginia National Guard by Christian Davenport. Yeah, I think it's weird, a whole different lifestyle. The Dark Side, the inside story of how the war on terror turned into a war on American ideals by Jane Mayer. I should probably put this closer to the top of my list. So, Are you guys planning your 2025 reading list already? I am. If you're not, how come? Isn't everybody? Come on, come on. The Rise of American Democracy, Jefferson to Lincoln by Sean Willens. This book is hefty. It is hefty. And the font is somewhat small. Oh boy. Happy, happy. Joy, joy. It is a chunk of monka. And it is, well, it is over 800 pages with notes, 796 without, so that still counts for a mammoth, right? I have so many mammoths I need to read. Inside the Revolution, how the followers of Jihad, Jefferson, and Jesus are battling to dominate the Middle East and transform the world by Joel C. Rosenberg. I have, I have issue with this title. <laughs> so of course I bought it, of course I did, because I want to know what what they think, what information, ooh, very good information. Okay, there are numbers, historical numbers. Ooh, what's that? How many radicals are there in Europe? I don't know. Oh, this is gonna be a good book. I might like, like it, I might hate it, it might be a mix, might be a toss up. Agent 110, have you heard of him? Agent 110, an American spy master and the German resistance in World War II by Scott Miller. Did you tell me about this, this spy? No, you're, you told me about another one. Okay. Whole other spy. Oh my goodness. Oh, this is interesting. I'm going to have to do a lot of editing in this video. <laughs> Squirrel! Oh, they have a timeline in the beginning. And they have principal characters. Do you all do that when you start a book? Do you look at the beginning and see what information is offered? I used to skip a lot of it. If it was just for a book, I would often skip like a fictional book I would often skip certain things, but if it's history, I read them. Hubris, 
the inside story of spin, scandal, and the selling of the Iraq War. Hmm. By Michael Isakov and David Korn. Oh, this ought to be good. Hmm. I will be snarky later. Hamilton, Adams, Jefferson, The Politics of Enlightenment and the American Founding by Darren Staloff. Because, yes. Now, do, do the uh, Federalist Papers have... Oh, we're going to have to compare the Federalist Papers to these to see how much is repeated. So Prometheus has read most of the Federalist Papers, right? I think he has read most. And when he saw this, he, it reminded him of the Federalist Papers. After now peeking through it, it might be a repetition of some of the papers. Battle Cry of Freedom, the Civil War Era by James M. McPherson. This is an Oxford history of the United States. You can see that the dust cover, the dust jacket is pretty, pretty bad, pretty bad shape. Well, that's pretty. I might just take the dust cover off because that's pretty. What was this? 1960, 1970s ish? Because that's kind of how it feels. I'm sorry, I have to take a peek real quick. But oh, they have. Why do they do that? There's no copyright date. So I don't know. I'm sorry, I can't tell you. Okay, and then the last, and there's a mix in here of Christian books and then more history books. So I bought this one just because there are a lot of people that talk about Debbie Maycomer. Angels at the Table, I have already read this. I will give a review of it later. Uh, not what I would call a Christian book, more of just a clean fluff book. Why You Can't Stay Silent, A Biblical Mandate to Shape Our Culture by Tim, I'm sorry, by Tom Minnery. And interestingly enough, this was misshelved. And so I'm glad I found it. I hope it's good. Okay, so this next book I've heard about from some other channels, from other booktube creators that have said that this book is really good. I have read two of this author before. Pearl in the Sand by Tessa Afshar. Um, I like the topics that she writes about. She is one of the better Christian authors, I would say. And then Maeve Binchy. I had to get them because the library sale, friend sale, never has, I don't say never, rarely has Maeve Binchy. The very few that I do have were from that store. I think most of them. And so I had to get these, and I don't have them. So now I can put them in order and read them in order, because someone told me that I need to read them in order. So now I think I can. So Tara Road by Maeve Binchy, Heart and Soul, and White Thorn Woods. I haven't looked up the order since I have bought these, so I will put them in order on my shelf and then start working on them. And now back to history. This is Lincoln and the Tools of War by Robert B. Bruce. Forward by Benjamin P. Thomas. I don't know who that is, and look at this very nice letter written by Abraham Lincoln. And of course there are pictures. I say of course, but you know me, I like pictures. I'm a visual person. What can I say? And, hmm, oh, I'm not familiar with these people. Who is George H. Ferris and James C. C. Holinshade and Isaac R. Dillard, Diller, sorry, and James Woodruff, four inventors whom Lincoln helped. Okie dokie. Not familiar with this. And Horatio Ames. <laughs> I'm sorry. There's a picture in here of a very long cannon. Lincoln's most expensive weapon. Horatio Ames and his wrought iron rifled cannon, of which Lincoln purchased 13 at more than $16,000 each. Can I have one, please? <laughs> uh. 
The War Within, A Secret White House History, 2006 to 2008 by Bob Woodward. Why does this author sound familiar? I'm going to have to check my other books and see why. And the last book, Why We Lost, A General's Inside Account of the Iraq and Afghanistan Wars by Daniel P. Bulger. Is it Bulger or Bulger? Bulger. I think I'm going to have to put a whole bunch of my war books together now that I have acquired so many. Anyway, so that that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Please leave a comment down below and let us know which books sound interesting or which books you think are probably not going to be that great. If you've read any of these, let me know and I will try and bump them up on the TBR list because, you know, my books cut line all the time. Anyways, I hope you all have a great day. Talk to you later. Bye.